All right, everybody. Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, 9 o'clock Pacific, we are here to connect, communicate, and learn from inspirational leaders in and outside the mortgage space. So sometimes we have top producers sharing what's happening in the trenches today. And today we have, uh, gosh, Todd Duncan, the one and only, uh, the coach of coaches who's been at this for more years than I can count, a mentor and a friend. Todd, welcome to the call today, brother. Always good to be with you, Dave, and your community. And excited about our topic today. And uh, it's, uh, it's a blast uh, to think through of, you know, uh, just you and me and, and uh, you know, how long we've been doing this. And it just keeps getting better and better. And it's always good to see my friend Muddy and then Todd Bookspan and, and Don. So good to see you guys. Anxious. Can't wait. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm pumped. I know you're going to cover five principles, five concepts of a high performance mortgage organization. I love the fact that we started this. Todd called out a script that he's going to share at some point in this call. And he was <laughs> telling me that he spent 45 minutes thinking, wordsmithing, reflecting on this. So guys, don't miss a minute of today's call because in the last, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes, you're going to get a script that Todd spent 45 minutes pondering on. So check that out. Uh, Todd, dude, it's good to have you, man. It seems like we're both here every week. So thank you for your leadership. You know, it's great to be here. And, you know, you just said, uh, you know, you referred to the other Todd as a mentor and friend. And I'm so honored to uh, say that no doubt uh, Mr. Duncan has been one of my uh, biggest uh, mentors, inspirations. I learned so much uh, early on uh, attending your events and now what's become, uh, you know, high trust boot camp, And I'm just super grateful for any time that we get to spend together. So I'm excited to hear this masterful script. I mean, think about that the rest of you. When's the last time that you spent 45 minutes thinking about your business, let alone thinking about a great script for these times. So I can't wait to hear it as well. Right on, right on. And then pressure's have, on. <laughs> the pressure's on, man. I, I thought I would put that on. And then we also have joining us in the leadership chair. We have Muddy. I've interviewed Muddy multiple times recently. I think what he does in terms of making concepts and ideas visual, making them awesome, I think has never been more important. So Muddy, thank you for joining us in the leadership chair. You know, chime in, help get takeaways for Todd. And most importantly, let's try to unlock some of the awesomeness and, and make it memorable for folks. So thanks for being here, Muddy. Right on, Dave. Thanks for the chance to be here. Todd, great to see you. Awesome to have a chance to sit in and listen on this mastermind and soak up some of these awesome ideas and insights. So, man, I wish I got a. I didn't. That looked pretty cool. Thank you, buddy. Count of three. Let's do it, buddy. <laughs> it, it, one more time. Um. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So that was the framing. So, so Todd, we are in July, early July, mid July of 2020. And so it's a, it's a pretty unique and special time, not only in the mortgage industry, but in life, and not just as an American, in this world. You know, it's, it's wild times out there. Interest rates are super low. Uh, there's, by all you know, definitions, a refi boom taking place in the mortgage space. Purchase market, you know, surprisingly, is super strong in most markets. And when you really go through the data and the facts, it's not that surprising. Like, there's just so many fundamentals that make buying a home, purchasing a home strong. Americans have more equity than ever, but also Americans have no more uncertainty and fear than ever. So, so I kind of paint that picture, Todd. Um, you've, you've put thought into this, but you know, how do you want to take this conversation and the five principles you want to share today? I think, I think it's interesting just at the start. And, and first of all, thanks. It's always great to be part of a group that thinks high performance, you know, so it's easy to have a topic that's called high performance because uh, that's what masterminding is all about. And, you know, I think it's interesting if you frame where we are right now, yes, we've had the lowest rates in history. Yes, pipelines are busting. Yes, uh, staff is, is, you know, tired and there's a lot of fatigue. Um, and then you just pull away from the mortgage business a little bit and you look at the idea that in our world today, that there is a elusiveness around why we do what we do and, 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 and what we're actually trying to be. 
and life is is really throwing challenges to the you know the universe of people and if we look at america harris poll just two days ago did a summary release on a survey they did on july 4th so what 10 days ago right or or not even that eight days ago and um only 14 percent of americans are reporting that right now in july they are very happy 33 percent are reporting that they are happy and 66 percent are off of that grid at some level the other thing is 82 percent according to the harris poll of consumers in america are fearful of their financial well-being and so if we just look at data and we look at stats that's coming in right now in the mortgage space, we have an opportunity to continue to utilize the thinking around high trust, certainly the thinking around total cost analysis and what we bring to consumers. And I'm just on a bandwagon right now that if 14% if, uh, are really happy and 33% are, are happy and, and two out of three are not happy, what do we do as a community? What do we do to bring some level of sanity, some level of happiness, some level of joy, some level of certainty? And how do we help people achieve a fresh breath around financial pressure? And it's that straightforward. And so what we've been doing for you know, the last uh, four or five years is assembling this group of elite guys and gals that, you know, that are part of a, a kind of a think tank, not, not dissimilar from what you have done, but really putting them into what does this look like on the streets? And how do you guys build mortgage practices that are hugely profitable, that are hugely rich and rewarding from a content standpoint, and that um, you've made a transition from really being like everybody else to being one of a kind, to being totally unique and being someone that brings a level of unprecedented value to any conversation you have in a way that creates brand lock-in. And that's it. So. The five principles that we want to run through are, are out of that elite group and their principles that are generating the lowest income right now per month in that group is $78,000 a month and the highest income in that group right now is $327,000 a month. And that's a loan officer, not a branch, not a region. And uh, so it's exciting. So we've run all these past these guys. We're coaching these guys and gals to use these things. And so it'll be fun to see where we take the combo. But it's good to be here. Really good. Right. To be. Well, I, I love that, and I'm looking forward to hearing the first principle. Before we, we do the first principle, I know that, you know, Sales Master is going to be virtual this year, and I am super pumped about that. Uh, how many people do we have signed up for Sales Mastery so far? So the actual registration list went beyond 24,000 today registered, and the um, list of people that are registering, but we just don't have the contracts back, is about another 14,000. And, uh, and so we're, we're coming in right now, somewhere around 40,000 people that want to be part of mastery this year. And it's global. We, we've got Canada involved. We've got the UK involved. We got, just got a contract last night from a, a big company in Australia. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see how this first principle has actually created the virtual digital live experience for sales mastery this year, because if this first principle didn't exist, we would not be where we are today. So super blessed and grateful that we're probably going to have north of 50,000 people attending Mastery this year. Amazing, amazing. And uh, we'll, we'll close out, guys, with, you know, where to sign up, how to sign up. There's a mortgage coach deal. But I'm super excited for two big reasons. One, it's never been easier to join Sales Mastery. It's virtual. We don't have to travel. Uh, we have access to it. And I'm also super pumped that the way Todd is making it available for companies is that we can have both mortgage professionals and production teams getting access to this content so that we're, we're upgrading together. I think it's never been more important to work as a team uh, between production and sales. And uh, I love what you're doing with Sales Mastery. So cool. Well, Todd, let's get into it. What's number one principle? <laughs> so it's, 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 it's number one because it's number one, obviously. And it's number one because the other four don't matter unless you understand number one. And I'm going to give you these five things today. I'll put as much meat on the bone as, uh, as I can. And then, you know, if you want to go deeper on this content, you know, just ping us on social. And uh, we've got a couple different slide decks that we, can, that we can send out, Dave, you know, in cooperation with you. But uh, at the end of the day, the, the first thing that everybody has to get their head around is the idea of what a principle actually is. And when you, when you really stop for a moment and, and ask the question, what is a principle, okay? A principle is truth 
that cannot be denied and in fact is irrefutable, meaning that it cannot be disproved. And so when, when I first you know, got into this idea of, of what, what are principally centric mortgage practices, real estate practices, I mean, what do they really look like? They are they're people like you and me that follow a, a set of governing principles. There might be a hundred different methods to execute a principle. This first principle probably has 500 different layers to it that you could apply just the principle to. And there's no real hard and fast rule about a method. Like there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of methods that can help you become rich. There's a lot of methods that can help you lose weight. There's a lot of methods, but if you don't understand the principle, none of the methods really matter. So the first principle that you cannot deny that is irrefutable is this principle, write it down. Everything can be improved. That's it. So that's the principle. Everything can be improved. So the, the, the challenge is to, to look at a couple of things. One is um, radical transparency with oneself, um, really looking at your own authenticity and, and your own truth, and then making decisions about how would this principle apply to the areas of my business or the areas of my life that matter most. For example, how could I improve the depth, breadth, and connectivity of a referral partnership? Everybody right now can agree probably that every relationship can be improved. And so then the question is, what method do I need? You know, we choose high trust. We choose new lines of questioning. We, we choose different unique value propositions. But if every relationship can be improved, then I want to look at improving the ones that have the greatest room for improvement and then improving them to the point where they make the business easier and more predictable. Everything can be improved. Dave, you and I were talking that um, we can improve the dialogue that we have with a consumer. And if we could improve and sit down and think, why don't I figure out exactly how to improve my conversation or whatever that first kind of impression is through scripting that I own that's deep. If I could improve that, what would happen if it generated a one or 2% increase in conversion every single month over a year? And you stop and think about that. If all I did was park on improving the first two minutes of a connected conversation, and my conversion rate could go up by 24% in a year, it's about $9 million in commissions over a five-year period of time. That's how important this principle is. So you look at it and you start to think, um, it's a mindset, right? You know, when you think about billionaires and you think about how billionaires think, billionaires think first about mindset. It's all about mindset. And if you don't believe deeply that everything can be improved, then you're not going to go about improving it. And so what we, what, we, what we do in Elite is we give a 94 question diagnostic on what do you need to improve? And what we know through that diagnostic is that it generates between four and $500,000 in extra commissions a year the first year you deploy at least 10 things off the diagnostic. So you look at today, and, and um, I just uh, had an article posted with Housing Wire yesterday. It was the number one article yesterday on um, lending life. And, and here's a snippet. Okay, so, so just guys hear this, just hear this. There's a crazy mindset to this bordering on obsession with all top performers. And it ends up sounding like this. Why take 40 years to do what I can do in 10? Why take a week to do what I could do in a day? Why take a day to do what I could do in an hour? Why take an hour with a client when I could do a better job, cut that in half and see twice as many clients? Why talk to 10 prospects to get one deal when I could do a better job with one prospect and get 10 deals? Why show 10 properties when I could show two to three? Why take three hours to do one open house when I can do three open houses an hour each and triple exposure and create a buying frenzy? That's everything can be improved in 13 lines of text in an article. 
And so the question is, the question is, where, where, where do I need to improve? And it's hard right now because business is big, right? Pipelines are full, right? Records. I talked to a CEO yesterday. They've had their third month in a row of a billion dollars in fundings. They have never, never funded a billion in a month in 26 years being in business. So the business is there and, and that's the danger. When the business is there, we don't necessarily think we have to improve. And yet the chance to improve is when everybody else that we're competing against doesn't think they need to improve. Here's another stat, Dave, that's interesting. Um, I just did this, I just did this before this article was published. So I went to Glassdoor and, uh, and then I went to Indeed and I did a couple searches. And one of the searches was, what is the average income per hour in America for the profession loan originator? And according to Indeed, the number right now is $37.52. So let's just say, and, and let's just say that the, the productivity mastermind group is way beyond that, right? But let's just say it's $37 an hour. What would happen if every week I can improve that by 10% of that number? So, you know, $3.70 the first week, $6, $7.40 the next week, on and on and on and on. Everything can be improved, which means to everybody in the Mastermind Productivity Group, whatever income you're making right now, you might think, what? I can improve that? Well, sure you can. And when the market shifts and that income goes away, you're going to wish you had. And so the idea is everything, everything, everything can be improved. And that's a principle, Dave. It does, it's irrefutable. You can't argue with it. I, everybody can improve. I and everybody can improve a lot when it really comes down to it. No, no doubt. So that was a, a huge principle. Here's another belief I have that's along these lines. I think a lot of people can look at like, this is a bad job and this is a good job and know the difference between good and bad. I think 90% of the population could do that. I think a lot of people struggle with what's good versus what's great and what's great versus what's wow. Like those, those top levels of changing processes, of improving scripts, I don't think everybody intuitively sees that. And so I'm gonna push everybody who just heard what Todd said to think about the things in your process, whether it's at the point of sale, whether it's in process, or whether it's after you close a loan, where, where are you good, but you're not great? And, and be honest with yourself and really audit those things. One of, the, one of the things that's just become super clear to me over the past couple months is that almost every mortgage coach loan officer, every loan officer can improve how they ask for a referral within the process of a loan. And, and Jeremy, I did a site visit with Jeremy Forcier who, who had improved it. He had, he, his improvement was he'd wait till someone would say thank you. And at that very moment when they're saying thank you, clear to close, whatever, he would just do a simple script. Can you, you know, we love helping people. Can you help me with something? My goal this year is to work with people I like. Can you introduce me to two people you think I should know and I can help? So, so guys, that was one of those things where I'm not saying that's the ultimate script or the only script, but I know so many loan officers that have implemented that. I just talked to a loan officer this morning that has generated 24 referrals over the past 30 days just by implementing that little nuance, that little script, and five extra loans. So five extra loans because they went from good, I was asking for referrals in process, to great a better way of doing it. And they have five more loans next month because they identified a good to great opportunity. So, so um, Todd- Dave, I'm, Dave, I'm sorry, I, wanna, I just wanna piggyback on this. So no guys, I think this is, this is a monstrous example of why improvement needs to exist. Because at the end of the day, when you have a borrower that you have one job, and that is to blow their consumer experience through everything you and your team do, blow their mind. That is your job. And so the sooner we do that in whatever referral process we have, the sooner we do that in our consultations and the faster we create the highest level of trust, the more likely at the end of that first experience, a borrower is going to look at you and they're going to say this, 
I have never experienced something so good as this in all the time I have bought real estate. That is code to you to understand that if somebody says that, the time to embed them into your referral ecosystem is now. And that's the job. So if, if we don't focus on improving the front end experience, the first impression experience, and I would ask you to, I'd ask you to consider this on a scale of one to 10, 10 being gold medal, world-class Olympic, how good are you and your team at delivering a level 10 front end experience in the first five minutes of an interaction with a consumer that you've never done a loan for? And, and, and when you improve that, then you don't have to wait till they say thank you 14 days in or seven days in. They're going to say thank you to you before the whole thing starts. And that's the way that you build these ecosystems. And I'm telling you right now, like last time we were together, Dave, we talked about um, consumer centric thinking. And right now, the, the, the loan originator of the future has got to build a business practice that by the end of next year, 50 to 60% of your volume is coming from non-traditional sources, not realtors and builders from non-traditional sources. So everybody that you app with, here's the deal. If you could improve, if everything could be improved, why don't you improve the filter on what level of influence a borrower and a co-borrower have? What social circles are they in? What not-for-profits are they in? What is their title? How many people are in their company? How, much, how, many, how many people do they influence? Start thinking then, because I'm gonna tell you right now, for almost everybody, I believe it's a million dollar mistake to not have something in those first five minutes that is game changing. And if you do that right, then everything else is easier. So just, I needed to add on to that because that's the intensity with which this first principle, and by the way, you do the first principle really well, then everything gets easier. Yeah, I love that. And guys, I didn't show a picture of a total cost analysis, but if you are not giving a total cost analysis to a family, you are not delivering at the wowest, highest level, period. I mean, I, we've proven that. I mean, we started the year with 34% of loan offices that close over 100 loans a year using Mortgage <laughs> Coach. It's up. We're no longer like a new idea. It's, it is the best way to deliver that wow experience. So, Todd, we, we've got four more principles to get to. Todd Bookspan, I'm going to, after he does this number two one, I'm going to let you do the unpack it. And Muddy, we'll have you jump in after this number two. Oh, so, boy. So, Todd, what's, Todd Duncan, what is number two? Okay, so here's, here's number two. Number two is, um, and again, it's another question around how do billionaires think. And how billionaires think is they want to accelerate early failure versus late failure. Okay, and so the second principle is success can only be built on failure. And a lot of people get the absolute crap scared out of them when they think about failing. And the reason why they do is because they have a wrong view around failure. And so, you know, when you think about a total cost analysis, the first time you do it, you're going to feel naked and alone, right? You're going to feel like, I have never done this before. This feels weird. I'm not ready for this, blah, 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 blah. When in fact, the mindset ought to be, I could do a TCA poorly and be better off than not doing a TCA at all. That's the mindset of how a billionaire thinks. And so when, when COVID hit, I'll just give you guys a personal example, okay? COVID hits and we have... I don't know, 28 events, speaking gigs or, you know, our own events that we sell tickets to, gone, just gone, right? And it's not failure in the sense that we did anything wrong, but it is going to be a failure to our economic model if we don't do something quickly and if we don't do something rightly and if we don't do something that is a, a healthy response to a world that we have no control over. You guys don't have control over rates right now. You don't have control over the feds. I don't have control over when hotels are gonna open. I don't have control when airlines are gonna come back. I don't have any control. But what I do know is that if everything is built on failure, how do I use what's happening right now and turn it into an abundant, prosperous mindset? How can I take COVID and how can I say, okay, what do we do differently? So, I mean, the first thing I did 
is I'll just show this to you guys. First thing I did is I wrote a brand new book. So I'm figuring, you know, if I can't go fly, so I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. So this is my book. It's 500 pages. It's uh, almost a hundred thousand words. And, uh, and then I said, so I got a book. So right now nobody's publishing books. And so what do I do with the book? So what do I do with the book is I turn it into a 16 hour video series called connect. And then what do I do with that? Well, then I put it on my paywall and, and now I have people buying connect because I can't go out and speak publicly because we can't go out to events because hotels aren't open, right? So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And so it, the one thing on this principle, and Muddy, you're going to have to capture this one, is purpose must be your flotation device. In, in any time of challenge, and, and right now I know that you guys have bursting pipelines, right? And it's, it's really hard to understand. Okay, failure. I'm just trying to stay above water right now. But long term, if you're going to grow intentionally and grow, grow, you know, by design, then it requires you to grow purposefully. So in all of COVID, the only thing that mattered to me is answering a simple question. How do we continue to make an impact? That's our purpose. If you saw the movie Ford versus Ferrari, great movie, right? There's a, there's a scene where Carol Shelby is talking to the Ford employees and talking to uh, the, the, the idea of what they're actually trying to do. And, uh, and he got really, really clear on his purpose. And, you know, if you look at this vignette, it's about an hour in. Um, he, he's having a dialogue about what is my purpose? And he talks about there's people that understand pursuing purpose. And then there's people that become obsessed with purpose. It drives them clear crazy if they can't figure out how to deliver it. Well, what Carol Shelby wanted to do was with Henry Ford, build the fastest automobile in the world and take Ferrari out of the equation. That was his purpose. And he says in the movies, my job is to build the fastest automobile in the world does his shtick and at the end he goes like this these are his exact words he goes my name is carol shelby and i build race cars you know and you just go okay that's it and so we had to answer the same question which is um how do we make an impact how do we make an impact and how do we deal with this and so you know one of the things about this idea is is mistakes are going to happen learning from them is optional that the mindset of a billionaire is uh, uh, the more mistakes, the better. The more breakage we have early, the better. The more we can get the small failures out of the way, the more likely the big success is going to happen more quickly. So let me show you exactly in my mind how we did this in COVID. So I have a $100,000 recording studio right behind this logo. And I'm thinking, you know, the, the reason I have the studio is I want to, I'm in the content business. I manufacture content. And if I can just walk 20 feet into my studio, then I can produce content on demand, right? And, and so then I'm thinking, okay, how do we get messages out there? How do we, how do we connect with the, the universe that nobody's flying and nobody's coming and this and that and the other thing? So we did our first live stream three months ago, and we did it to 20 people. So we put everything together. We have all the technology. We have all the cameras. We have all the stuff. And we do our first live stream. And we have so much breakage, it would blow your mind. But the breakage was with 20 people. Okay? And the 20 people were in our ecosystem. So it was like, if we had breakage, they wouldn't be like, what a poor experience. They were actually there as a focus group, right? So we do 20. Now listen to this. One month later, and this is only three weeks ago, one month later, we do a live stream and we have 4,130 brokers in Canada that sign up for this live stream. So now we go live for four hours and no breakage and 92% of that group stayed on through the entire process. Well, why would we, why would we wanna do 4,000 brokers? Well, because if sales mastery is going digital, what do we need to do in the small world so that when we go to the big world, the chance of failing has been mitigated. And that's exactly what we did. And so we're doing another live stream in two weeks and we'll probably have 10,000 people on that live stream. And then in eight weeks, Sales Master goes live and we'll have north of 50,000 people. So now listen, with 4,000 people on a live stream, if any of you know me, Bookspan, you know me, how long would it take for me to get on jet airplanes, fly to cities, and impact 4,000 people? What would you guess? You know, 
at least 48 hours, right? Well, let's just say the average audience size is 400. How many speeches do I have to give to impact 4,000 people? 10. 10. That's 20 flights. That's at least 10 cities. And it's two weeks, maybe three weeks of travel. Well, I don't even have to leave my office. And now I get to impact 4,000 people. And let me just give this to you as a, just, this is a business operator. We made more money in a day than we make in a month. And so this whole idea of success can only built, be built on failure. How do you, in that proverbial way, take lemons and turn them into lemonade? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know what our company looks like next year. I, I mean, I really don't. But what I know right now is we'll impact more people at Sales Mastery this year than we have, than we have impacted in 20 years. And that's the power of this principle. That is just huge. I think it's such a crazy thing. You, you said pipelines are bursting. And I think the biggest risk is, is that busy people aren't going to take the time to look at either of these principles and they aren't going to take the time out of their busy schedule to be part of sales mastery, to really be able to accelerate, right? For you to say that you, how much money you're making by reimagining business. What's your advice to the people who say, I'm just too busy. Like, how do you get somebody to realize you've got to spend the time looking at this stuff, even when you're busy? Cause that's what your folks in, um, in your highest level groups are doing. So the answer Todd, it's a, it's really cool. The answer, the answer is, um, if you don't intentionally learn, grow and get better, whatever market you're in, when it changes, you will be roadkill. And, and so I need you to understand that, that what we did is we said, okay, so that might be a real legitimate, like pipelines are still going to be huge in September, right? Okay, well, let's just assume that they will. So now let's do this. Instead of going eight hours a day for three days, let's take mastery and take it to three hours a day for twice the days. And then that way, nobody has to stop the day to get exposed to mastery, but they can plug in for an hour, two, three, and they could actually do on-demand agenda making, right? So what are the things that resonate most with you? What are the sessions you want to see? And you don't have to show up for the whole thing because the whole thing is going to be available to you for the month after mastery is over anyway. And we have ops teams coming in. We have one company that has 900 processors and underwriters that want to come to mastery this year. Talk about a whole new mindset, right? And, and so for, for our, for, from our standpoint is, I remember as a loan rep when interest rates went up like 300 basis points in a week. And I remember how business, it didn't even like start to slow down, it just stopped. And so the smart operator, like you guys are thinking, what does the future look like? I mean, this is a season of abundance and harvest and you had nothing to do with it, except to the extent that your database loves you and your advice, and they're going to continue to use you, it's going to change. And so my advice is do it. It's like, it's like a fraction of what you, front row seat, you don't have to buy an airline ticket, you don't have to pay for food, and you don't have to buy a hotel room. So just figure it out, and you get 30 days of access to sales mastery for the price of what normally would be one-fifth of a live ticket. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I mean, it's always been one of my favorite events. And I remember back, you've got one of my favorite speakers uh, that I had ever seen at Sales Mastery, John Maxwell, coming back. So I know it's just going to be amazing. And I, I really hope that all the people who are watching live and watch this in video uh, sign up or encourage their companies to sign up or both. So I want to make sure we get Muddy in here. I, I have seen Muddy, Muddy looking down a few Muddy. times. So we, we, we've got two of five principles. So we got three more principles, but Eddie or Muddy, what have you netted out so far? Well, what a treat to be on with such awesome folks, right? And learning about these five principles and recognizing that a principle is that truth that cannot be refuted, period, right? Um. I know. Um, and so in this unique time in 2020, um, where people are two out of three are unhappy and virtually everyone is fearful. These principles matter more than ever. So number one, everything can be improved, right? And that is that critical mindset. Without it, nothing else matters. And what that looks like is when you make those little improvements, the delta, the change is massive, right? So principle number two Success can only be
be built on failure. And that life ring is purpose, that thing that will keep you afloat no matter what. And so, you know, the truth embedded in this is that failure will happen, but that learning is optional. That is why yeah, your, your nickname, you don't muddy anything. You clarify, dude, you are, you're a dose of clarity. So, so guys, I want you to think of what just happened. I mean, how he netted that out, how he made this more memorable. And always my goal is to, is to help the mortgage coach community of loan officers to be the best of the best. And I, I think in today's world, we need to learn how to wow on Zoom. We need to wow on Facebook Live. We need to, to wow when we meet a family, meet a knee. And so uh, I'm a big advocate of Muddy. All three of those are all like, I think six slides. Those could also be micro content and marketing to help make some of the things more memorable. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but um, yesterday he posted in the mortgage coach community uh, the three essentials to making a smart mortgage decision. He visualized it. He gave that as a gift to us in the community to um, share in social media, to add to our presentations. Uh, and I want to remind you guys, you can hire Muddy to come on one of your realtor events so that imagine you, a realtor, you're crushing it for 100 families that came into that event. And then they get literally this guy drawing out the key insights. And so not only would it make the event more interactive, more valuable, but you'd also have some deliverables after the event to make the experience you just did more memorable for both the family and the realtors. So, so Muddy, really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate you uh, helping make this awesome interview with Todd even more awesome. Thank you, brother. All right, Todd, number three. Todd. So, um, so number three is, is super, super important. I think it's probably, um, the centrifuge of, of everything you do going forward. I just finished um, a 20 hour masterclass with, uh, with Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks. And it was absolutely unbelievable to, to be able to sit at the feet of, of hearing, you know, this great visionary behind uh, Starbucks and like him or don't like him, it doesn't matter. You know, he's, he's got 35,000 stores in the world and, and he brings the coffee experience alive. One of the things I wrote down, just looking at my notes, he wrote down, Great companies that build, I wrote this down when he was talking, great companies that build an enduring brand, have an emotional connection with customers, and that's not new to me teaching it, it may not be new to you, but has an emotional connection with customers, and these are the four words that I love, that has no barrier, has no barrier, and that emotional connection is built on the most important characteristic of any business relationship, trust. So that sets up perfectly with, with you know, what we believe in. And so here's, here's, the, here's the, the third principle. Emotional connection deepens trust and accelerates referability. That's number three. And what most people don't understand is the job, and I'll just make it to us, the job of a mortgage professional is understand the difference between marketing and attraction. You've got to understand that. that. That is a card, Muddy. There is a difference between marketing and attraction. Attraction isn't marketing. Attraction is magneticism because of value and connection with somebody that then helps attract to your ecosystem. So in this new book that I wrote, which is now in this new video product, there's five levels of a connected relationship. These are all worth writing down. The first and most important, if everything can be improved, which is number one, then every relationship can be improved, okay? So here's the mindset. The first requirement of a high-performance relationship is chemistry, pure and simple. If I don't like you and you don't like me, we are not, no matter what we do, ever going to have fun doing business together. If I'm attracted to you and you're attracted to me and we have chemistry then we have a more effortless relationship. And the best relationships in our elite group are relationships that are effortless. And in the mortgage business, the best relationships you can have with referral partners are the relationships that are effortless. So chemistry is number one. Now, if I have chemistry, 
then conversation is number two. Last time we were together, I was talking about ask the questions you've never asked so you can learn the things you've never learned so you can solve the things you've never solved. That's the new conversation. Ask the things you've never asked so you can learn the things you've never learned so you can solve the things you've never solved. Because if I have chemistry with you and then we have a conversation and I learn that, then all of a sudden I can come at this with deeper value that creates more attraction. If the conversation is good, then what is missing from about 95% of loan officers approach is ongoing collaboration. All collaboration is, is a conversation with deeper dialogue. And so whatever I learn in a conversation that's important to you, what do we need to do in collaboration to roll that out in your business? And it could be essentially anything that you decide Yes, we can improve this. So every agent needs to understand my listing presentation could be improved. My open house strategy could be improved. My digital marketing could be improved. You know, my showing strategy and, and operational procedure could be improved. And so your job as a mortgage professional is to collaborate around where does the conversation ask where you'd like to improve and then how do I make that happen? Now, the fourth thing then is if I have collaborative conversation built on chemistry and collaboration is real, then I'm going to have conflict. Conflict is not, is not negative. Conflict is very positive. If you and I have a conflict around a mindset or a way of thinking or this, or I, I come to you and say, well, I like that idea, Muddy, but I, I don't think that'll work for me. Well, we got to resolve that conflict because if you don't think it'll work for you, it's not going to work for you. So the job of the, the, the more modern mortgage professional is to remove doubt in any of the conversation and collaboration. So chemistry, conversation, collaboration, conflict removal, and those four things equal, equal conversion and connection. And that's what everybody needs. And it's attraction doesn't cost you a dime. Attraction doesn't cost you a dime. And so Dave, you know, whether, whether, it's, whether it's borrowers, realtors, it doesn't matter. Whether it's a, a senior, you know, leader of a region in a mortgage company and a bunch of LOs or brands, none of the, everything rises and falls on emotional connection, period. End of story. Could not agree more with that. And uh, I want to make sure we get the other two principles out. And I also want to make sure that we hey, get relax. your script. Piece of cake. Yeah, uh, before we wrap this up. So I'll leave it to you as to when to do the script and when to do, you know, what are the next two principles? So, so do you, I, I hope, and, and Muddy, I'm, I'm going to commission you to bring this alive. I hope that you're seeing the connection between number one, everything can be improved. If I have an attitude to improving, I have to have an appetite for failure and failure needs to be okay. And if I have an appetite for failure, then that means one of the things I need to trust is emotional connection versus logical presentation. Okay, and there's a balancing act here because TCA, if you don't have emotional connection, TCA is a logical presentation. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. It is better than 90% of LOs that still talk about rate and still talk about fee and don't do, do a TCA. But the magic of TCA and emotional connection is that the TCA comes alive emotionally because the recommendations and the reiterations have to be tied to a borrower's deep emotional desire and goals. And any script that you use that does not connect emotionally with a client is going to be one that has a chance to create polarity. And polarity is what happens whenever you start talking about numbers. Okay, so just put that aside. Here's the fourth one. The, I'll, I'll give you the principle and then I'll, then I'll talk about it. Competence leads to confidence. Confidence leads to consistency. Okay, the number one goal for a high performance business and a high performance life is consistency around any discipline that you're deciding make up your operating system. Okay, and so where, where, the, where the opportunities for growth are, are most often not in doing more things, but the opportunities for growth are doing the few things at a level of competence because you're confident in the methodology. 
I got to be confident in a total cost analysis, but I can't be confident in a total cost analysis unless I am competent at a total cost analysis. So the question would be, how many hours are you practicing a TCA before you, before you go live? And if you do believe in number one, that everything can get improved, what is your TCA delivered to conversion rate? And how do I start measuring what creates the opposite? What creates the higher conversion rate is not not doing the TCA, it's doing the TCA better, right? And the better I get at business, the better business gets for me. And so where are we not competent? When I was learning how to fly a plane, I will never forget the first time I had to fly under the hood. And what flying under the hood means is you have a hood on and all you can do is fly the plane on instruments. You cannot look out the window. And in visual flight rules, you know, you, you really count on aviating the plane, being able to look out the window and then glancing at your, at your gauges. But when you put the hood on, you got to be able to fly the plane looking at only your dashboard and where is everything going. That is very much what needs to happen here. And until you can fly the plane without looking out the window, you're not ready to be a pilot. And so the, the only idea here is how is TCA being embedded so that your referral partners are offering a value add on top of any lender that any consumer would think that they were going to use? And how do we take that to a level that in this script that I'm about to share with you, we use the total cost analysis as the, the game slayer. What I mean by that is if we do this right, we have no competition. And so, so whatever you're not competent at, get better at it only if it's one of the core skills to build the business. And this is very important. Don't spend a minute of time getting competent at something that somebody else is more competent at that, than you and they can do with you instead of you having to do it. And that is the mother load for building a high performance practice. It's not doing more things. It's doing less things much better because principle number one says everything can be improved. So pretty cool principle. Dude, you, you are the master. You know, not only are these principles just fundamental truths, I can't imagine anybody listening to this not just getting a great reminder. And even if you're the most successful loan officer, you're doing over 100 million, you're killing it, you're getting value from this. If you're a new loan officer in the business, what a gift to be new and to be getting this type of leadership. So Todd, you're, you're I don't know, just the way you're, t you're nailing these and the way you're tying them together is awesome. So do you want to do the script now or do you want to do number five principle? Like what order do you want to share? Yeah, I want to do number five first. Let's do number five. So what's- I want, I want um, everybody to stay on as long as I can. So we're going to give the script away in the last 60 seconds. Okay, so stay on for the whole <laughs> call, guys. And we, may, and we may go a couple minutes over because I think Todd is on fire. So uh, buddy, I'm going to bring you in uh, to kind of close the thoughts and Todd, I'll bring you in to, you know, kind of wrap it up at the end, but let's, let's let Todd, Todd rock. What's yeah. number five? So, so number five is, you know, it's like if, if number one is the most important front end principle you understand, then number five is obviously the most important back end principle that you understand. So principle five is accountability is more important than action. And, and you really need to let that settle in. Accountability is more important than action. And what we mean by that is that when you look at action, action without accountability loses leverage ability. Accountability around action creates leverage ability. And leverage ability is I have a ripple effect in whatever it is I'm trying to do, if I have the accountability and the mindset that accountability is healthy to do the things that matter most. And so when we did this broadcast in, in Canada, we had mortgage brokers, we had real estate agents, and I, and I, did, a, uh, I did an Indeed survey for, for Canada. And um, it was like, okay, where would I like to have some accountability? Well, I'd like to have some accountability around what is my ROI per hour? 
You know, I'd like to, I'd like to start measuring. And here's just a question. Are you measuring every single week how much money you made through closings and how many hours you worked? Because if we're looking at that and we go all the way back to principle number one, the only way to make more money per hour is to understand everything could be improved. But unless I'm being held to a level of accountability that sparks discipline around what produces the growth of what can be improved, then the likelihood is it's not going to improve as fast. So yesterday I spent four hours with somebody that um, is connected to um, kind of the metamorphosis for the last 10 years of country music star uh, Tim McGraw. And if you know anything about his story, um, one of the things he did is he decided 10 years ago that being a, a rock star was, was, was killing him. It was actually killing him. And he made some decisions about what was life he wanted to, to have and, and how could he improve what he's doing and, and this, that, and the other thing. And if you know the story, he, he 10 years ago got in the best shape of his life and has transformed his entire life and that of Faith Hill and that of his three daughters by focusing in on the discipline around personal health. And one of the things we talk about is that there is a complete relationship between wealth and health. And one of the other produces more or less of the other. I can argue if I'm healthier, I'm going to be wealthier. I can add if I'm wealthier, I'm going to be healthier. I can add if I am not healthier, I'm not going to be wealthier. And I can add if I start losing money, I'm not going to be healthy. So there was this relationship. And one of the things he said, <clears throat> which I think is, is cool, is most people's definition of accountability is related to pain. And he said, he said, it was painful. And he gave up drinking. He gave up all the crap that you eat. You know, when you're on the road, he, he built an 18 wheeler that has a mobile gym in it so that he and the entire band can work out two hours before showtime so that they can have their mojo on and get into the right site, you know, with endorphins and all that kind of stuff. But an 18 wheeler, that is his gym that no matter where he's playing in America, he's got that going on. And in this book, um, Grit and Grace, he talks about the most important thing that people understand is that accountability is a gift. It is a gift. It is not an obligation. And you need to start thinking that way because the psychology of goal setting versus goal getting. Okay, everybody needs to understand this. The psychology of goal setting versus goal getting is completely immersed and bathed in the idea that I choose and I desire accountability. And until you have that, and until you write, write that in your mind, and, and, and until you understand that accountability is, is a strength, not a weakness, because if number, principle number one is true, it's irrefutable, right, Muddy? It's irrefutable. Everything can be improved. Then I need accountability in the areas that matter most to reach a level of the improvement that I desire. And, and man, like if I told you I was going to write you a check for $10,000 Monday, if I call you randomly and you have this script memorized, you'd memorize a script over the weekend. i can tell you that right now. I'm not going to do that, but when it's really important, accountability matters. So those are the five, Dave. That was huge. That was huge. I, uh, and I love the fact that you made a, a huge point of knowing that they all, uh, they all count on one another, right? They all, they all come back to number one and they're all big and, you know, accountability is something that everyone needs, but nobody wants. So I love the fact that you just say it's not optional. But, but Todd, so Todd, here, here's what's at stake. Listen, you guys, that first question I asked you, do you want to take 40 years to do what you can do in 10? Just like me, do I want to go on the road and speak a hundred days a year? Or do I want to impact the same number of people I could impact in a hundred days on the year in one day? in my studio. It's just, it's just, we all deal. I'm, I'm not insulated from this any differently than you guys are. And so the idea is accountability. If I'm making a hundred dollars an hour, like, like if I gave you a dollar and I said, if you're accountable, I'll take that dollar and turn it into two. Would you like to double your, 
your, your income? And you'd say, yeah. And I said, if I can give you $1,000 and teach you how to turn it into 2000, would you like that? And you would say, sure, I like that. So here's how I'm going to hold you accountable to make that happen. Well, if you're making $30,000 a month right now and accountability can take you to 60, would, would you want that? I mean, you can work four times as long or you can work 400% more effective. You just got to make a choice. And we all have to do that. I have to do that. I'm not preaching to anybody right now. I am telling you, I got to do the same thing I'm asking you to do. And these five things are on my wall behind the light that is lighting me up right now for this conference. So we're all in this together. And God has gifted us with the ability to be great. And we have to make that choice. So here's what we got to do. We got about four or five minutes. Muddy, in a minute, I'm going to have you share your takeaways. Then we'll close with Todd's script. The last minute of this call will be the mortgage coach script. Todd, for anyone that uh, hasn't signed up for Sales Mastery, you know, how, what should they do? How can they do it? And then I have some of my own thoughts on that. But if you could just tell folks what to do and how to do it. Yeah, so the best thing is you guys have a link, uh, a Mortgage Coach link. And the best thing is for individual tickets, just go ahead and, and uh, come through the Mortgage Coach link. Um, basically, all three days plus 30 days of all the content on our learning platform, all the videos, all the scripts, everything. Um, all of that is $399 normally. 299 early bird mortgage coach is 269. So $269 buys you a thousand dollar ticket to mastery and gives you a month of material beyond the live uh, event happening. If any of you are corporate leaders through the 15th of July, we have a single price option. It's $25,000 and the $25,000 gives your entire company access to sales mastery. So if you're an executive leader on this call and you want to talk about that conversation, then all you need to do is email Craig Young at craig.young at hightrust.com, craig.young at hightrust.com, and we'll, uh, we'll reply and show you how it works. So guys, we'll put a link down below, individual loan officers, brokers, people that aren't going to be able to take that corporate offer, sign up with the mortgage coach link, get even better than the early bird discount. And, and, and guys, there's a lot of you that are not managers on this call, but let your, let your manager know you would love them to, to sign up at a corporate level for sales mastery. I think uh, the fact that it's $2,000, it's a couple hundred dollars versus usually several thousand between what you pay All in, and yeah. what you spend in travel, it's, it's a $3,000 plus investment. But more importantly than that, it's loans. What is a loan worth to you? Uh, it's loans, it's connection. And then what we all know that it's more important than ever that we love and pour value into our production teams. So there will be tracks, there will be things specifically designed to renew, to help your production teams get the same message and have that high performance concept. So never been a better year to sign up, uh, check it out. Also, Todd is, you know, I've never, well, not never, I've been on that stage many a times, but he's including me in the content. There's going to be a number of mortgage coach leaders on stage. So it's any mortgage coach leader, you want your loan officers to not just use the technology, but like Todd said, learn how to emotionally connect. The combination of emotional connection with mortgage coach, never been more important. Muddy. Break it down for us, and then Todd, don't go. We got to get that script before you go. Muddy. Awesome. Last three principles in 30 seconds. Number three, emotional connection deepens trust. That's the attraction and referability. Number four, competence leads to confidence, and confidence leads to consistency. So the takeaway is to do fewer things much better. Number five, accountability. More important than action. So if you want that ripple effect, that's where to focus. And speaking of accountable, I've got a prospecting call starting right now. So I got to be accountable to my commitment and pop off. Great seeing you guys. Thanks, Thanks for the That was awesome. Yeah. So guys, for I see a few people who said, hey, I want a picture of that. I'll see if Muddy can share that in the group. Remember, hire Muddy for your next WOW event with realtors. Also, if you're having management mm -hmm. events and you want him to visualize those, uh, he is here for you. I want to see you guys taking advantage of that. So Todd, what is the mortgage code script of the day? All right. So, um, so the, the, the backdrop to this script is in 
our book, Five Stars, we talk about story selling. Story selling sounds like this. Most lenders will blah, 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 blah. How we are different is blah, 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 blah. So that's the recipe factor. So here's the script and I got to read it because it's brand new. Um, you ready, Dave? I'm ready. Most lenders will quote you a rate in the first three to five minutes of speaking with you. How I am different is I'm more of a home loan strategist. You refer to me from Betty at Remax because I am uniquely different than the industry. There are dozens of variables on what gives you the rate that is a real rate and the rate, more importantly, that is the best rate and best program for you. What consumers don't realize is the lowest rate with the wrong mortgage strategy could cost more than a slightly higher rate with the right strategy. Our approach is to custom design a total cost analysis for you, integrating your long and short term financial and investment goals with your payment, equity, and cash flow priorities, not objectives, priorities. So that's the script. When you read it without presenting, it takes about 20 seconds. So we'll go ahead and post that, Dave, shoot it over to you, and you guys can monkey with it any way you want. It was created three hours ago based on Dave's request, so I haven't tested it, but I think it's brilliant. I love it, Todd, and if I was kind of adding some footnotes on that, I would have said, in family, if you talk to a lender and they don't give you options, you're not getting what you need to make the smartest decision, and if those options don't show how they're going to perform over different time periods that are your goals, you cannot make the smartest mortgage decision possible. So you essentially, between what you said to Todd, how he elevated that, every other rate quote that's not options, that doesn't show cost over time, they are the villain. You know, as Donald Miller would say from story branding, you so are because, the guy. Hey, because every script can be improved, I just added your words, Dave. All right, boom. So, so Todd, we're three minutes over, book span, but take us home, brother. You know what? I, you know, everyone who stayed on was super smart because that was just pure gold. And I think what you guys have to remember is, you know, Todd Duncan is the OG of really helping you grow. And I, you know, go back, re-listen to this. It's going to be posted up on YouTube. Um, by 2 p.m. is what was just said in there. Um, listen to it over and over, but more importantly, you know, continue to connect with Todd and his community. Uh, be part of Sales Master. I think that's going to be amazing. And uh, there was just so much value here. It's always great, Todd, to uh, get to spend some face time uh, with you and Dave, obviously, for bringing us all together. Uh, super grateful for that. I love this industry. I love you guys. And it's always an honor to present to such a dialed in group of people. So I was impacted as well. So guys, if you got value from this, give it a like down below, share it with your mortgage friends. For all you managers, this is well worth scheduling a sales meeting around, listening to some of these concepts and talking with your team. And guys, sign up for Sales Mastery. If you are going and you've signed up, shout it out in our Facebook group. You know, we don't promote a lot of events in our group and we literally daily elite people promoting events. We do promote a few, but if there's one event you're gonna to go to in 2020, make that sales mastery and let us know who's coming. Take care of y'all. This call is a wrap. All right. Boom. See you guys.